Oh, uh, now I just feel like we're we're getting somewhere. We're getting there. We're getting there. One more we're show. We're getting there. We're in Elliott Shore Parks and a show away from kickoff time. Yeah, we are. And he's with us now. And, uh, again, Go Birds Podcast knows the Eagles as well as anybody. And all of our guests are brought to you on the Bud Light guest line. Bud Light, easy to drink, easy to enjoy, just like this conversation with Elliot Shore Parks, who joins us now. Hey, Elliot, welcome to the show. How you doing? Good. How you guys doing? Thanks for having me on. We're, we're doing great. So go ahead and I- explain to everybody uh, how to stop uh, Jalen Hurts so, so, that, so that we can tell the Niners. <laughs> uh, good luck, I guess, would be my best advice on how to stop Jalen Hurts. I mean, this, this offense this year, uh, look, I think like every team, they've had their ebbs and flows. And certainly, you know, I guess if you want to look for one area, it would be that his uh his shoulder it, you know it has been a question the last few weeks but when he's healthy and he is you know mostly and this offense is playing well they can run the ball uh they can throw it hurts is really hard to uh to sack for a loss and they don't turn the ball over off often so i think much like when we talk about the niners the reality is these are two really good teams and you know it's going to just be who plays better on sunday Dak is a quarterback who's deeply flawed, and we saw that last weekend. It seems like Jalen Hurts isn't the same QB, doesn't turn it over a lot, but we're concerned out here about Jalen Hurts and his ability to run. What's the breakdown between Jalen Hurts in designed runs in the run game versus QB scrambles? Yeah, so they actually don't call as many designed quarterback runs as as people think. They probably only call them. I don't know, three or four times a game, if that. A, a lot of where Jalen's running comes from is from the RPO. Now, you could you know, argue that's a called quarterback run, but obviously he, he can hand it off there. So I think that's where uh, they're really going to try to attack this Niners defense. If you look at some of the teams that have had success against the Niners this year, right, it is teams that do the RPO stuff. So I, I think that the Eagles will do that. But, yeah, I mean, he, he's, he's great at running, obviously, on the RPO stuff, like I said. But outside of that, He's just really hard to bring down, and, and he's super smart with the ball. So he doesn't fumble it often, um, and, you know, he knows when to get down uh, to avoid big hits. And, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, if it's not Justin Fields, I, I, I think that um, Jalen might be the best running quarterback in the NFL. Elliot Shore Parks is with us, covers the Eagles, the Go Birds podcast, which you can get on the Odyssey app. Here with us on Willard and Dibbs, 95-7 the game. Um, a- a- Elliot, before we, we move off of Jalen Hurts, um, how does, and, and this is a little bit of a question based on some things that happened earlier this year with the 49ers, you know, when Trey Lance got hurt, uh, this city for a while was like, why are you running a quarterback between the tackles? And, and like one of my responses was, you ever watched an Eagles game? What, mm-hmm. what, what is the Eagles fan response to the quote unquote danger that, that yeah. the team puts Jalen Hurts in? Yeah, I mean, look, it sounds like you guys debated there, and it's certainly something people talk about here. I think he ran it 17 times in week one, um, and they've gotten that down a little bit. But I think the reality is is just this, and I can speak to it with Jalen, and maybe it would apply to Trey Lance if he ever plays for the Niners again. But, you know, the, uh, the, the Jalen Hurts thing would be, it's what makes him special, right? I mean, look, is there more risk involved? Yes. But with Jalen running the ball, with Jalen being an, a, even a threat to run, uh, the Eagles are a completely different different offense. So, you know, you can try to protect them. You can do certain things. But but ultimately, if you have a quarterback that can be as good of a dual threat as Jalen is, uh, is, because, look, he can throw the ball really well, too. He's improved a, a ton at that. But in terms of what his run running does to a defense, the pressure it puts on them, it would be foolish for the Eagles to, to try to minimize it. Injury is part of the game. He could get hurt. He has to be smart about how he goes down. But I think in Philadelphia, at least, the discussions about limiting it are over because they're one game away from the Super Bowl, and it would be silly to try to fix what isn't broken. Eagles, number one in the league in sacks, number three in sack differential, sacks committed versus sacks allowed. Let's talk about the offensive line. Where are they at their weakest in terms of allowing pressure? Yeah, I mean, the Eagles have really, really good line play. They have a great defensive line. They have a great offensive line. and It's because they've invested a ton of resources into it. So, Where could they be at their weakest? Um, I mean, I guess I would say the left guard spot, uh, Landon Dickerson, has not had an outstanding year. He's kind of in and out uh, of of the lineup. He missed a few snaps against the Giants. Um, Jordan Mailata has a ton of potential, and he's played at an all-pro level at times. I think this year probably hasn't been his best season, so you could maybe say the left tackle spot. But I think both those answers are really stretching it. I mean, 
I, I've covered this team for almost 10 years now. Their offensive line coach, Jeff Stoutland, uh, is one of the best, if not the best in the league. And I can maybe count on one hand, and it probably wouldn't even take many of the fingers to say how many times I've seen a defensive lineman, one singular lineman, like a Aaron Donald or, or a Bosa or a Micah Parsons, come into Philadelphia and wreck a game. It just, it just doesn't happen. The coaching is too good. The talent is too good. So there's really no weakness uh, on that line. Uh, Elliot Shore Parks, Go Birds podcast with us. Uh, Elliot, I've been to games in Philadelphia. It's it's loud. It's a good fan base. Uh, I, we, we understand the passion completely. I do also think, though, uh, it's getting overstated a little bit, like how much this is going to scare everybody, like going into Philly in January. But I wonder your thoughts. How, how would you compare this home field advantage to other stadiums around the league? It's a great question. I mean, look, it's an outdoor stadium. So so ultimately, compared to other, you know, like New Orleans, I think, has a, has a home field advantage that can really rattle a team. It's a dome, right? And the, and the, the noise is held inside. Detroit, uh, you know, has an outstanding home base when they're playing well, which they certainly were this year. Philadelphia is, is a great home field. I mean, I was at the 2017 championship game uh, against Minnesota, and it was unbelievable. And, you know, Vikings players will tell you, uh, Viking coaches will tell you that it rattled them. So, I think ultimately, you know, it's loud, it's raucous, um, and it really just kind of comes down to can, can you control, control yourself early, or if you let it get to you, they know how to keep it going and, and how to really uh, get on top of you. So I would say it's a great home field advantage, but the Niners are a playoff-tested team. So I, I actually don't think it'll be that huge of a factor. Um, okay, Elliot, so you're saying uh, Niners by six? Is that what I heard? <laughs> Man, this is a really tough game to pick, I'll, I'll say. I mean, I think that they're both great teams. I just ultimately, when I look at just the matchups and what I know wins football games and wins, you know, in the playoffs especially, it's line play, and I think the Eagles have the advantage on both lines. Uh, it's quarterback play. I think the Eagles have the better quarterback. And, you know, when it comes to taking care of the ball, both teams are great at it. The Eagles are really good at it. And I think the Niners, in my opinion, just rely on turnovers more. When you look at what they need to score, they need to get turnovers. There's a 10-point differential when they get one turnover versus when they get two or more. That's not the case with the Eagles. The Eagles don't need turnovers to score. So as long as the Eagles take care of the ball, I think they'll win the game, and I'm going to pick them to win the game, probably something like you know 27 to 20 or, or something like that. I think it's going to be close, but I think the Eagles win. Uh, Elliot, thanks for coming on, man. Really good insight. Yep, no problem. Thanks for having me on, guys. Oh, all right. There you go.